Well, good morning, everyone. Now we can say with gusto, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. For those of you who are watching, we know we have a lot of viewers who watch online, here and abroad. Um, hope, hope that God blesses you today, and thank you for joining us in worship. At this time, Patty will lead us forward with any announcements we happen to have. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everyone out there. Enjoy your beautiful day today that the Lord has given us. For our announcements, are there any announcements for the church? I have a few, so I'll start with those. There is coffee hour this after church, and I hope you can join us downstairs. We have strengthening of the church envelopes available on this uh, sign-in attendance table, and anyone that is uh, feeling that they need, you can uh, fill one of those out. Also for the MyFest uh, event, which is on the 19th, 20th, and 21st, we do uh, still need some sign-up of help in the actual event and in the kitchen on Thursday for prep. We also want to thank all that were involved in the mulching party that we had. It was uh, quick and uh, effective, so I think it looks very nice out there. We thank you for that. Uh, we have a birthday to celebrate. It's A.J. Klum, an anniversary for Mark and Iris David. Again, remember the Friends Incorporated and bring paper products or cleaning products for their needs. Anything else? Okay, if not, then let's stand for our call to worship. Praise God, who has raised Jesus Christ to reign in power. Praise, Praise God, God, who sends, who sends the, the Spirit, Spirit to empower, empower the, the church. church. Praise God with trumpet and sound. Praise God with flute and harp. Praise, Praise God, God with trimble and dance. Praise God with strings and pipes. Let everything that breathes praise God. Let's join together in our opening prayer. New every morning is your mercy, O God. Your faithfulness is as boundless as the heavens. We gather to worship you thankful for all your gifts. We thank you that Jesus, in dying and raising for us, has overcome the power of sin and death. Help us to accept the freedom Christ offers us through your patience among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's join together in our opening hymn, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the sun and the moon in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Would you please be seated? I can't think of a much better way to kind of set the, uh, the mood and the tone for a worship experience. I know Janet, she likes... I, we always kind of look at each other when there are songs that you especially like, right? Yeah, I, I noticed that. So, And it's really special having a little tiny baby with us. We're going to be baptizing in a couple of weeks. Good to have you here. Although I hate to say I also baptized her mother. <coughs> so that was all. That was just a few years ago. You know, God loves us more than we love ourselves. Sometimes we look in our heart, and we don't like very much. We might feel ashamed. We might feel broken, disappointed, discouraged, all of those things. 
we may feel we haven't lived up to the expectations we have for ourselves. But God loves us because that love is never broken. And the greatest of these, as we are told, is love. That gives us the freedom to confess our sins, our mistakes, knowing that God is there to embrace and to lift us up. So in the spirit of confession, would you join together with me in our prayer of confession? Let us pray. Gracious God, you encourage us with your love, bringing new life out of death. We confess that we need your life-giving power in our lives and relationships. We have hurt others and been hurt by them. We are often angry or afraid. We're not sure when to assert our needs and when to care for others' needs. Forgive us, O God. Pour your spirit of wisdom and healing upon us, that by our lives and our loving, we may glorify you through Jesus Christ, the risen one. Would you join me in our unison assurance of pardon? The good news is that we don't have to depend upon ourselves, but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality. Thanks be to God. Amen. for some of you, not everybody's, but your favorite time of the service. Uh, greet each other in Christian love. Pass the peace of Christ. Give each other a holy hug.
please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Shelah. But now that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself, the Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Shelah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when your, their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. Thank you, Patty, for the sharing of the Old Testament. I'm actually sharing a couple of letters today for the, the, the basis of my sermon, but Jesus is woven throughout them, as, as will be in the case in my message later on. So hopefully you won't fall asleep when I'm telling you what it's about. First is from 1 Peter 2, verses 19 through 25, and the second is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. For it is a commendable thing, if, being aware of God, a person endures pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do good and suffer for it, that is a commendable thing before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow his steps. He committed no sins and no deceit and was found in his mouth, was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he was suffered, he did not threaten. But when he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly, he gave himself, bore our sins in his body on the cross. So that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd. In 2 Corinthians, we are afflicted in, any, in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. May God's blessing be added to the sharing. These God's words. Jelani, do you want to come up or you want to stay back there? That's up to you. Because all I'm going to say, you're going to come up, bud? Come on. Come on up. How you doing, bud? Okay, fine. Okay, have a seat. How's your week going? How's school going? Good. You, you're looking good. You're looking good. Growing like a weed, isn't it? You're just growing so fast. Won't be long before you're taller than me and taller, taller than your mom and Everybody else, okay? Yeah, he said, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be looking down on you. Yeah, good, glad to do you do, doing okay. Now, I'm going to do something intentionally, okay? I'm going to say, I'm doing this intentionally. So, do you ever, do you ever when I was, was going down to greet everybody, I was so eager to get down here and, and greet Sheila, I almost fell down. I almost, been, I almost fell down, didn't I, Sheila? And I would have been pretty wild, if I, you know, if she had to catch me, and then we both get tumbling, hit one of the pews, and they all went like dominoes falling. But no, that's a, you only see that in some bloopers, right? But, um, but you know, just imagine, do you ever, you ever fall down, do you ever get knocked down? A lot. Oh, a lot. You know, I'm talking about getting knocked down in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm going to be talking about sports figures who were kind of knocked down. Have you ever been knocked, felt like you were knocked down in your heart? You know, like discouraged? disappointed, hurt inside. We all have, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. We love you here, man. 
We all have, you know, and that's what we'll be talking about today. But we don't have to stay there. One of the reasons why we have a faith, a Christian faith, is first and foremost to hear every week that God loves us, that God will never knock us down, never do those kinds of things that sometimes other people do, you know. And what we try to do is learn to do that so that we can help pick people up that have been knocked down. That's what Christ teaches us. So I think that's an important lesson. I'm sorry I didn't have any big science experiments. We'll do that sometime. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, you know, maybe one of those volcano things or something like we often do at children's moment. But what's that? Oh, see, he's done. He's been there, done that. You're a smart guy. Okay, let's have a word of prayer before you go back. Gracious God, thank you for Jelani and his family. Bless them. Bless all of us. Surround us with your love. Help us to know we are loved so that we can share that love and help pick people up, okay? God bless you, buddy. Thanks for coming up. All done. You can, you can go back. <laughs> Unless you want to preach. You may have a future preacher in your hand. You never know. Angie. <laughs> Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Oh, God, may the words which I'm about to utter and a privilege that I now assume be acceptable in your, heart, in, in your sight, gracious God. Amen. So I'm going to tell a couple of funny stories here. Expect Tim and Ron to laugh really hard. So they can hear you. Two sportscasters on television were discussing the, the great running backs in professional football. They, they came to Walter Payton. You know, good old Walter Payton. We all remember him, don't we? The all-time leading ground gator at the time in the NFL. What a runner, said the first commentator. And what is interesting, and he said, he goes on to say, do you realize that altogether Walter Payton has gained over nine miles of rushing in his career? The second sportscaster was kind of in deep thought about that for a moment, and then responded, and to think that every 4.6 yards on the way, somebody was knocking him down. Hmm. That's a lot of being knocked down, isn't it? And a lot of getting up. But Walter Payton didn't stay down once he was knocked down, did he? He got up and he did it again and again. And again, I'd like to tell you about some others who have been knocked down in life before we get into the text. There was a young man who liked to play basketball, but the trouble was he played so poorly in his early high school career that he was cut from the basketball team. You're probably thinking, I think I guessed, I, don't, I think I know who you're talking about. He was discouraged. In fact, he thought about giving up basketball altogether, but his mother encouraged him not to quit. She told him to take all of that negative energy she was directing toward himself and channeled that into working harder and harder on his skills. Because it, it, really, it's, it's, it's what it's all about. It's about perseverance, isn't it? The young man wisely took his mother's advice. Oh, he worked hard. He worked extremely hard. Relentlessly, he pushed himself. He paid the price. Until his high school coach asked him, begged him to come back. That young man who had been knocked down, you might have heard of him. His name was Michael Jordan. There was another young man who was four years old before he could speak. Four years old before he could speak. We'd be sending him to developmental specialists now, wouldn't we? And seven before he could read. Think about that. In today's world, we want him reading by, the, you know, by two months or something. Well, not quite. <laughs> but but, but we, we do. We, we say, developmentally, where's my child? And you'll get that. He performed so badly in all the high school subjects except math, the school officials asked him to drop out. Now, we don't try to do that these days. He failed an interest exam at Zurich Polytech Institute. His name, you probably guessed it by the last part. If you haven't guessed, his name is Albert Einstein. Yes, even the great genius Einstein had been knocked down, knocked down, discouraged, told he couldn't do something, and that's something I think all of us can relate to in our lives, isn't it? Now, in our text for this morning, the writer of 1 Peter was dealing with people who were getting knocked down and finding it difficult to get back up because starting the Christian faith back then was a heck of a lot harder than it is now. And it's tough now. 
So he advised them to suffer with patience. Huh? Huh? That kind of sounds like Grin and Barrett, doesn't it? Suffer with patience. It's difficult to advise someone who's been knocked down in life to suffer patiently. We all know that. We are, after all, McDonaldized. McDonaldized. We want McAnswers. We want instant Mac solutions, don't we? We wish that every problem in life would have a quick fix to it, that we go through, drive through, and by gosh, we're all better. The writer of 1 Peter was writing to the early Christians who were getting knocked down because of their faith. And it was troubling them. They were suffering, not because they were doing wrong, but because they were doing something right. Think how much the Apostle Paul wrote in his letters about getting knocked down. He's trying to start those, those struggling churches. We are hunted down. We are never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed, he tells us. We are an Easter people. This is a Greg expression. Easter people living in a Good Friday world. That's what we are called to be. We're still in the season of Easter time. Sometimes we get knocked down when we don't deserve it, do we? I mean, nobody deserves it. We, once when Bob Hope received the major award, he responded, he was a great, he was so wonderful. He, we all miss him, don't we? He, he, he responded, I don't deserve this, but then I have arthritis and I don't deserve that either. Bob, you're right. Now that I've got arthritis, I, I agree. And although his comments were partially in jest, Bob Hope had used humor on more than one occasion to help pick him up and those he spoke to, especially the troops, when he'd been knocked down. Humor is a marvelous way to help pick oneself up. You know, I wish when, you know, the speaking I do, that I was funnier, because sometimes you get pretty tough crowds um, after, after being knocked down. But, for example, during the years of the Great Dust Bowl in our Midwest, farms and fortunes were literally being blown away. How did people cope? With humor. With humor. One man said that during the 30s, the Midwest was so dry that when one man was hit on the head by a raindrop, he was overcome that he had to be, he had to be, have two bucks of sand thrown in his face to, re, to revive him. Okay, someone else said that he talked to a motorist who saw a 10 gallon hat on a dust drift. He picked it up and he found a head underneath it. Can I give you a ride to town? The motorist asked, the protruding head. Thanks, but I'll make it on my own, the head answered. I'm on a horse. Now that's a whole lot of dust and something else probably. So as a people of faith, we must know that there's so much more to our story than just to grin and bear it. And there is. We're called to be claimed by Christ, the resurrected Christ, who had been knocked down about as much as is possible to be knocked down. He was knocked all the way down to the ground on the Via Della Rosa when somebody helped carry his cross, Simon of Cyrene, and then he was knocked down when he was crucified and buried, then he rose again. And like him, we rise. In so many different ways, that's what faith is all about. Hope and conviction that even though we may not be knocked down, we will rise. The other day I was reading about a baby, baby crocodiles. Now here, here's a little, if you like nature and you like crocodiles. They're, did you know they're born, these little creatures thrash around the water, doing the dog paddle to stay afloat. You know, it's just like, they don't look like a crocodile with its tail and able to move, you know, never, and never, unless it's rolling around with its prey. But only after, it's only after they swallow some stones, which are used for digestion, that they gain a, the proper ballast or balance to swim horizontally. Now, maybe that is a parable. Maybe none of us get our balance in life, unfortunately, until we swallow a few stones. What can we do when we get knocked down? We can turn defeats of the flesh into triumphs of the spirit. We can turn our scars into stars. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us go forward as spiritual pioneers, learning to feast upon life's adversity, to fatten upon disappointment, to even enthuse and be undaunted by apparent defeat, to invigorate in the presence of difficulties, to exhibit indomitable courage the face of immensity and to exercise unconquerable faith when confronted 
with the challenge of the inexplicable. Let our lifelong battle cry become in a liaison with God. Nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. It's not easy to get knocked down, is it? And we're not called to fatalistically just grin and bear it. Even our deepest hurts can become even greater hopes. I've seen it again and again and again because all of you know who know me, I respond to crisis all over the country. And I see it again and again and again, rising up out of the ashes. That's what the cross is all about. The cross is now empty. The tomb is now empty. For like him, the resurrected Christ, we too rise. Sometimes we forget to whom we belong. And we get knocked down and forget that we were meant to soar. There's a certain man who went through the forest one day seeking any bird of interest he might find. He caught, unbeknownst to him, what was a young eagle. He brought it home, and he put it among his fowl and the ducks and the turkeys, and he gave it chicken food to eat, even though it was the king of the birds. Five years later, a naturalist came to see him, and after passing through the garden, said, that bird, that bird's, what you doing with that bird's an eagle? It's not a chicken. Yes, said the owner, but I've trained it to be a chicken. It's no longer an eagle. No, said the naturalist, it's an eagle still. It has the heart of an eagle. It has the wingspan of an eagle, and it will soar high up to the heavens. No, no, said the owner, it's a chicken, and it will never fly. They agreed to test it. The naturalist picked up the eagle, held it up, and said with great intensity, Eagle, you are an eagle. You belong to the sky and not to this earth. Stretch your wings and fly. Well, the eagle turned this way and that, and then looked down, saw the chickens eating their food, hopped down, and, and joined them in eating. And the owner said, I told you it was a chicken. No, said the naturalist, it's an eagle. Give it another chance tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next day, <clears throat> he took it to the top of the house, and he said the same thing. Eagle, you are an eagle. Stretch your wings and fly. But again, the eagle, seeing the chickens down below, feeding, jumped down, and he fed with them. Then the owner said, I told you it was a chicken. No, said, asserted the naturalist. It's an eagle. And it has the heart of an eagle. Only give it one more chance, and I will make it fly tomorrow. The next morning, he rose very early, took the eagle outside of the city, away from the chicken coop and pen and barnyard, and away from the houses to the foot of a very high, beautiful mountain. The sun was rising gilded from the top with gold, and every crag was glistening in the joy of the beautiful morning and its majesty. He picked up the eagle and he said, Eagle, you are an eagle. You belong to the sky and not to the earth. Stretch your wings and fly. The eagle looked around and trembled as if new life was coming into it, yet it might be a little bit afraid but it did not fly. The natura naturalist then gently took its head, made it look straight toward the sun. And suddenly, that eagle stretched out its wings, and with the sound of an eagle, it flew out of his hands and mounted higher and higher and higher. It soared and never returned. Though it had been kept and tamed as a chicken, it was an eagle. You see, you take us as humans and put us among the ducks and turkeys and chickens of this world, if we don't see those transcendent things and experience those transcendent things of God, we're like the chickens and the turkeys of the world. And he gives us rules to live by and tells us that we're a moral people so long as we live by those rules. Now, I do believe in following the rules. And we will contently live out our lives in a meager existence if we don't set our sights on higher things. But you let someone like Christ come into your life, straighten our backs, point our head toward the heavens, 
And then suddenly we realize that we are sons and daughters of Abraham. We are God's people. We are not chickens. We are eagles. Christ calls for us to rise up. Christ speaks into our hearts and encourages our spirits to soar. Come, people of faith. Let us be an Easter people living in a Good Friday world. We were intended to soar. Would you join me in that? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for oh, the ministry of Pop, the Apostle Paul and all who served and established churches that really made it possible for us to continue to worship you. In this confusing, conflicted world of ours, our divided world, God, you call for us to soar, to soar above all the division, all the strife, all the difference, because we are all, in the end, your children. We thank you, God. Help us to be an eagle in our own way. Amen. Now, I've got several um, prayer requests here. Actually, one of them that Anna gave me is one that I got, too, because I talked to Sandy this morning. Um, so, but I'm going to run and ask what prayers of joy or concern would you like to lift up? And remember, if it's coming from over here, I may come over there so that those who are viewing, which are quite a few people, uh, might be able to hear. Okay? Prayers of joy or concern. We just want to be real to live. I'm starting with this. I kind of a baby. Joy. I baptize you. I want to baptize her in a couple of years again. Okay, Mari. So the best man, best man in your wedding. I've got quite a list up here, plus one. Some of you didn't really know about my week last week. Some of you do. Um, we'll start with these, and I'll, I'll end with mine. And I think I'll read your, I can read your your writing, I think, Anna. We'll see. Um, I talked to Sandy this morning, because our older show, Walter, as you know, he fell during our shower. I was talking to Sandy, and he didn't have his wheels locked on his walker. And so, but his blood pressure went low. So they put him in ICU. I'm just kind of a tour. They, they transferred to ICU uh, due to his kidneys. It was shutting down. He's also in stable condition right now. I can report that. Um, the doctors also found he had two fractured vertebrae because he was complaining of his back hurting uh, besides a broken hip. The break is just below where he previously had a hip replacement. So the surgeon needs to go a little bit longer. Had to give up Coumadin Coumadin for one. Surgery scheduled for Tuesday, so continued prayers there, but also for Donna Klump, who will be seeing the doctor on Wednesday and is contemplating surgery for her bowel obstruction. And of course, continued prayers for Bill and Todd Winterow, Jerry Schuette, Randy Ryan, Randy, and Ellen Luke, uh, Reverend Ed, and Anna. Um, I would add a, a, a couple of others. You've got the do Donna Klump. As you know, uh, during the week, I respond to a lot of that stuff. On Monday and Friday last week, I got called on Monday morning, could I come to Ozaki County Human Services? Uh, I trained some of their people to be part of the crisis team, along with Ozaki County Sheriff. And one of the, the young ladies that I had trained, uh, she's got two children. It was a week ago yesterday, their 12-month-old um, just died for no reason. Too old to be considered sick still. By the way, um, and, and several of the women wanted me to talk to them about pregnant or had children about the same age, which is why I talk to you. I want to make sure you're okay. And the Lord's been mentioning that in our prayer time. And then I also um, have, am in the midst of doing a lot of work for a county mutual insurance company, provides workers' comp for 
policy on municipalities and counties. And um, they wanted me to talk to, apparently they have a lot of suicides, a lot of deaths. They wanted me to talk to them um, seven times this month on um, dealing with stress following the death or loss of a coworker. Um, and it, it was kind of eye-opening. So we were in Sheboygan on Tuesday, Platteville on Wednesday, the Dells on Thursday. So, and next week it's uh, Mina and then Oshkosh. So, so it's like, where's Waldo, if you know the game. So certainly please keep them in your prayers and I appreciate the travel mercies. Also, um, Allen, Texas. Another mass shooting. At least nine dead in a mall. This was yesterday. We need prayers for finding solutions, quite frankly. Um, and I pray that we don't become callous to them. So it's, um, it's a tough, tough time. So we have a lot of things that are heavy, but we have a lot of joyful things to be prayerful joyful about too this month. So would you join me with all of these prayers in our heart in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you are a God of all of them. We've heard a lot of bad, difficult stories, people being hurt, people being killed, a lot of darkness. Help God to bring light to those who are suffering and light to those whose hearts are full of darkness. And help us, God, because you call us to be those ambassadors, to be those Apostle Pauls in our own way, to reach out and touch people, not just in this place, but we have a world of hurt, and those people need us. Help us to overcome whatever fears we might have to do that. You are the great physician, God, pray for Oliver, Donna, for Todd, for Bill, for so many others perhaps we haven't even mentioned that need that healing touch. We pray that our prayers continue to go out to them and many others we haven't even mentioned who need our prayers. We thank God for a new life in our presence this month. We thank you, God, for the ability to gather together to find hope, to find inspiration. You told us this world would not be an easy place, and it's not. But we can still soar like eagles. And now, gracious God, we together at this time pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed us. In some measure, it is good that we've shared our gifts of thanksgiving. And Mark will share some music to further dedicate those gifts that we joyfully give.
gracious and always loving God, we would ask you to accept these gifts which we, your people, offer up to you. Grant that the causes to which they're devoted be causes of love given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. Would you please be seated? is the heavenly table spread for me. Here let me feast and feasting still prolong the brief bright hour of fellowship with thee. I have no help but thine, nor do You know what a privilege it is to share and stand and gather in our own way at the table of love, the table of ultimate love, referred to as agape, that great self-giving love that Christ poured out. So let us prepare our hearts for the preparing of the Eucharist. The table is now prepared for us. We are invited to share in the feast of God's presence celebrating here and now all that is meant by being alive. At this table, we celebrate Jesus, who connects our brokenness with his life, who gathers us together inside and out. We give ourselves to that wholeness, moving from hurt to happiness and from darkness to light, filling our lives with love, laughter, and each other, and joining with all created things Holy are you, O God. As was the custom when Jesus gathered to celebrate with his disciples that one last time in the upper room, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me, the bread of life. And as was the custom, the custom, Jesus took and he poured into a cup to which his disciples would drink. And he said, this is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. It is a cup of love. Would the ushers please come forward?
because we are one in Christ, let us take and eat together. And because God did not create all of us just the same, we're not like bunches of bananas. We're unique, and we have a unique way of loving and serving. This cup of love is poured out for us. Let us drink in remembrance of him. Would you please rise and join together with me in our prayer of thanksgiving? We give thanks, O God, because in your own free gift of love, you have reached out to us. You have refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest needs, and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, that we too may become bread and peace for one another and for the world. wings protect and guide you. Daily manna still divide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we Till we meet again When life's perils They confound you Put his arms Unfailing round you God be with you Till we meet again Till we meet Till we meet Till we meet At Jesus Till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening way before you. God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.